Hello everybody and welcome to the second round of the 2011 FIA Formula 2 Championship. Well, here's a full look at the top 10. Alex Brundle third, then Will Bratt in fourth. I think he's going to be a little bit disappointed with that. Pinheiro and Hegewald uh, running in fifth and sixth exactly as they finished yesterday. And a better qualifying for Jack Clark. And here come the red lights then. This Formula 2 race about to get underway. Five second board held aloft. The red lights come on. And we're away. And it's a better start from Mickey Von Brass. Alex Brundle's going nowhere. Is everyone going to avoid him? Just about. That was a very scary moment for Alex Brundle. But meanwhile, up at the front, that's Tobias Hagerwald. Is, is he up into second place? No, sorry, that's a little bit further back. Mickey Monras has got a great start, but that's a disaster for Alex Brundle. What does this boy have to do to get a bit of luck? Will Bratt is up into second from fourth on the grid. Then it's Mirko Bortolotti in third as the marshals try to push him clear. Now, if they can't get him clear, they are going to have to deploy the safety car. So heading out onto the hangar straight, it's side by side for second position. A great start from Will Bratt then as he hugs the inside line. Ramon Pinheiro is going to make it three abreast on the run down into Stowe. Then it's Tobias Hagerwald behind and Ramon Pinheiro nosing up the inside. Oh, a little bit of contact and Pinheiro goes round, spins back across the circuit. Hopefully everyone's going to avoid him this time. Pinheiro actually rolled a Formula Palmer Audi there in his first ever race in Formula Palmer Audi a few years ago. But that's a disastrous start for the young Brazilian. The rest of the field make their way down into Vale and Club, but an action-packed first half a lap. It's all just about settling down, Joe. And it was Will Bratt who actually made a mistake coming out of Beckett, which allowed Bortolotti and then Pinero to get right up onto him. And, uh, and Pinero really going for a bit of a sticking a nose in into Stowe, which, uh, which meant he clipped Bortolotti and spun round, and, and that caused the mayhem behind. So the rest of the pack making their way around Luffield. At the end of this lap, we'll give you a rundown of the order as it stands. Flying out of Woodcote Corner comes Miki Monras, looking uh, very commanding out the front. Then it's Will Bratt behind him. Mirko Bortolotti in third place. It's fairly close to four between uh, well, Zanella and Hegerwald. Zanella's made a great start as well. Marinescu in sixth, Clark in seventh, even him in eighth. Ninth is Kelvin Snooks, and tenth is uh, Timo Stortz at the moment. So uh, where did Zanella start? He started down in 10th position. So to launch up to fourth place, there's second and third. And yet Christopher Zanella, 10th on the grid to fourth in the race, is very impressive indeed as the rest of the field make their way around the Beckett's and Maggots. Oh, and there's Partiva Suresh Warren. He's got a broken front right. Oh, there's Sung Hak Munt. Now where is that? Is that, uh, <laughs> is that the new arena section? It is, isn't it? So he's obviously just dropped it, coming out of the hairpin, I presume. Absolutely, making their way down into Stoke Corner. Zanella took uh, a pole position and a fastest lap in Italian Formula 3 last year, on his way to sixth position overall. So he's, he's no mug in a single-seater. So they make their way down into the Vale. And Brad looking fairly comfortable. I mean, we saw he was very good at defending yesterday from Miki Monras. It's not really having to defend that much because, I mean, the dirty air is going to play a part, Jolian, but that, that is a fair gap. It, it tends to be just a, kind of just under a second that we, we see the gap settle at if, if it's dirty air based. Yeah, well, we saw Monras a bit closer than this yesterday and, and Brat actually slightly edging away from Bortolotti at the moment. So uh, Bortolotti clearly, for whatever reason, has not quite got the pace at this stage of the race. And there's Plamin Kralev after his great run. It looks as though Julian Theobald was uh, pootling into the gravel trap too, so I'm assuming those two have had a collision. It's Julian Theobald of the inside of Plamen Kralev. And what's going to happen here? Oh, Kralev turns in. Here's Zanella slinging his way through the first sector where he's set some impressive times. And, well, obviously, coming through the Beckett's Maggots complex, you don't really use the boost, I wouldn't have thought, but he'll probably be hammering it now if, he, if he's going to. He'll come across the timing line, which is just in front of um, Stowe, and it's a yellow sector for him this time, so not as fast as he has been previously. So I wonder if that has been boost-related. He's not too far off the back of Bortolotti, and Hagerwald is staying with him quite comfortably too, so it's all... Uh, Fairly interesting. They make their way through Club Corner. Ben Benjamin Larice trying to go around the outside at the Vale there. Sorry to interrupt you, Jolien, as they make their way through the new double apex right-hander. That is Club. So uh, that was an impressive 
an audacious attempt, I should say, from Benjamin Larish, tucked right into the slipstream. Oh, into Abbey, that's brave. Just about gets out of it. That was, uh, yeah, some brave stuff from Benjamin Larish. I think he was the what guy who had a lunge into Beckett's yesterday, so he's not af not afraid of an overtake or two. Locks up his front right, and now that has allowed Ramon Pinheiro to hook right onto the back of these two. Larish must have used a boost there out of club, and uh, not really an overtaking place at all, Abbey. It's nearly flat in these cars, but... Uh, now he'll be he'll be back on in, uh, Kowalska now down into into Brooklands and seeing if this is a better overtaking place. Not quite close enough this time around. Ramon Pinheiro is lapping. I think about a second a lap quicker. Well, it was half a second on that previous lap. His fastest lap is 1.2 seconds quicker than Benjamin Larish's fastest lap. So any moment now, Pinheiro will hook right onto the back of this scrap. Through Woodcote Corner they come. And Ramon Pinheiro currently running in 16th position, and uh, Timo Stortz is dropping down the uh, leaderboard there. So Timo Stortz, I'd imagine, has stopped somewhere out on the circuit. Stortz has just come through with a 2 minute 11 lap, so uh, I can only presume he's made a mistake somewhere. Yep, good spot, so Timo Stortz not falling, uh, not, not retiring, but certainly falling down the order. Now, here comes Larish on Natalia Kowalska. What's Kowalska going to do? She's going to dart this way, she's going to dart that way, and she's going to squeeze Larish to the inside line. And Larish, well, we know he's brave. He kept his foot in, and he squeezes up the inside into stone. Now, how quickly can Ramon Pinheiro get past as they make their way down into the left-hander at Vale? And has Kowalska got any response? Because they were... Uh, they were lapping fairly closely together. Here comes Ramon Pinheiro, though, through the second apex at club. Is he going to use his boost, or is he just going to tuck in and try and get a good toe? No boost as yet, so a brave move there from Benjamin Larice, Joe. Yeah, Kowalska darting two ways, actually, which he shouldn't really be doing, and squeezing Larice right to the inside, but he just kept his foot in, and once he's up the inside, then he's got that move done, so long as he's not, not too early on the brakes. And now uh, El Pinheiro around the outside. Well, that's a good move. I wonder if he got the inside line into the village right-hander. We'll get a replay of that in a few moments as they head out down the Wellington Strait. And well, where's Benjamin Larish? He's rocketed on up the road. There's Pinheiro in the white machine with the fluorescent orange in front. And yeah, Benjamin Larish has got quite a decent advantage, but I don't think it'll be long before Pinheiro reels him in. I think it's going to be a tough ask for Pinheiro to get back up to 10. Here's the replay of the overtake, and yeah, he's just going to lunge it up the inside into the tight right-hander at Village, and Kowalska probably didn't didn't see any point in finding it. Oh, she, well, no, she did have a little comeback into the left-hander at the loop. Couldn't quite hold it in there, but a, a good battle between those two. May have been Johannes Theobald coming through to take his drive through. Indeed it was. So Johannes Theobald takes his drive through. That's going to drop him down the order considerably. Probably somewhere to uh, Kowalska, James Cole, Timo Storz, that kind of region. And Ramon Pinheiro is still yet to get past Benjamin Larish, which is quite interesting. And there we just saw Brat running all four wheels off the track again at, at, uh, at Vail. So... Um Maybe not, maybe not heeding his uh, warnings, and he, he's still got to drive through this lap, so uh, maybe he's not seen that board. Well, this will be the teller. If he doesn't come in this time around, it suggests he hasn't seen it, and he's still uh, adamant on abusing the track limits. There, you can see it. We are sat just opposite that, so uh, we can see it being held out. Drive through penalty for car number 17. So Will Bratt has a decision to make. Does he see this board or is he just trying to pull out I mean it would suggest he has seen it and is pulling out a gap because he's been setting some really fast laps will he hug the inside line coming out of Luffield no Will Bratt stays out for another lap well I can only assume then that Will Bratt hasn't seen the board Joe yeah that's that's four times I think Bratt's passed now so uh, he'll be given the black flag now and and that'll be his race over so yeah, either, either stupid from Will. Um, he's obviously furious with that decision, but he could have still pitted and picked up some points. But, um, yeah, maybe he just didn't see it. It's, it's on a slight corner, and the board's not massive. Uh, and at these speeds, you come through, you're looking for your pit board. You've got a lot going on. But, uh, yeah, that's the end of Will's race. Yep, they're changing the board around, so they're now getting the black flag ready. So Will Bratt, second-place man. 
in the championship is about to be black flag the 22 year old very local to here only from Banbury which is about 10 or 15 minutes down the road he won the Euro 3000 championship back in 2009 which then subsequently came uh, also GP and this is going to so making their way Mickey Monras is anyway down into the right hand up at arena section Mickey Monras now with a 6.6 .6 second lead over Will Bratt so I wonder if the black flag is uh, more visible perhaps than the drive-through penalty board and this will promote Zanella up to third when uh, when Will gets this black flag and uh, that'll be a great try from 10th on the grid he navigated his way very well on the first lap and uh, really a, a rich reward for a solid first weekend well there's the black flag you can see being held out for car number 17 so there's no question about it now Will Bratt being told to uh, come into the pit lane under no circumstances there's, uh, there's no talking about it he's staying out again though so I think he literally just, just isn't seeing the black flag being held out at him no reaction to him as he drives past so I can imagine him finishing the race like this just unknowing that the black flag is out so Mickey Monras starts his final lap the black flag uh, still being held out for Will Bratt, hoping that at some point he'll see it as he laps Sunghak Mun flying past the commentary box. But Mickey Monras, the Spaniard, heading down into Beckett's and Maggots once more. Looks as though it's all fairly settled behind then. Uh, Bortolotti in third, and then Zanella. It's Larish now who's, uh, who's close to Gladys, and this will be the, the final point in 10th place by the time Bratt serves his penalty. So uh, this is the action on the last lap. It was the Italian Mirko Bortolotti who dominated race one here at Silverstone yesterday. But it's Miki Monras, the youngster from Spain, who has dominated today. Just 19 years of old, his debut weekend in Formula 2 heralds a victory. And it's a fantastic race for Miki Monras. His team are delighted. Let's have a look at the championship. Well, the, sorry, the race result, first of all. Miki Monras, 10.6 seconds clear of Mirko Bortolotti in the end. Zanella in third and Tobias Hegevold in fourth. We are assuming because Will Bratt was sent down the pit lane, he has been excluded. There's Benjamin Larish in tenth. When you are alone, the race seems to be longer and you start to think about the shoulder and uh, all the problems you were having. But at the end, it's OK. We managed to finish and uh, I had a good advantage, so I was not worried for, for my shoulder. Uh, let's have a look at the championship standings then. And it's Mirko Bortolotti with only a three-point advantage over Miki Monrath. And look at the gap they have already. The Mihai Maranescu. So Maranescu then, 22 points. Then Zanella and Hegevold and Bratt all in fairly close attendance. And a fantastic first weekend of the FIA Formula 2 championship. Sees wins for Mirko Bortolotti and Miki Monrath. Oh, <laughs>